We are all aware of the discontent of the American electorate. It's obvious. And those of us who practice the craft of politics can see it and feel it in the elections and in the campaigns. And the obvious question is, what will we do about it? Each party has policy answers to the discontent of the electorate. They're much different. But there is one fundamental thing which we believe uh, on the Democratic side needs to be part of this equation, restoring the trust of American voters in democracy, and that is maximum legal participation in the democratic process. We believe that giving people an opportunity to vote, an opportunity to register and to vote, is the best way for them to exercise their democratic options, their democratic rights, and be part of a process that changes the government uh, in years to come. The other party sees it quite differently. And you notice in state legislation, even in some efforts at the federal level, efforts to restrict the opportunities and access to vote. Those, I think, are wrongheaded. None of us will ever condone those who are not legally qualified to vote actually voting. We want to stop them whatever party they belong to. But by imposing new requirements and restrictions on access to registration and voting, there is a conscious effort by the other party to restrict the exercise of the vote by the electorate. That is wrong-headed, and I don't believe it's consistent with the American standard and American values. Today we gather to talk about a piece of legislation for our state of Illinois. It's a piece of legislation that has been brought to us by Senator Andy Menard, and he, I'm sure that President uh, Cullerton of the State Senate will speak to it as well. But it really gives to us an opportunity as people uh, are getting their driver's licenses and being asked the basic questions, producing the information to justify their right to drive, they are going to be given that opportunity to register right then and there. We believe that will expand the electorate and expand opportunity. That is our answer to the discontent of the voters. The other party's answer, restrict access to voting. In my mind, that is exactly the wrong way to approach this. Senate President John Cullerton has been a leader on this issue, and I want to introduce him now uh, to call up uh, our friend, uh, State Senator Andy Menard, uh, who is going to talk about the specific legislation. But we gather here today in support of the basic fundamental concept that Americans with the right to vote and participate in this democracy will make us a stronger nation. Senator Cullerton. Thank you, Senator Durbin. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, and all of you here today, I'm happy to stand alongside my fellow legislators uh, and friends. Uh, Senator Menar, of course, is here. Senator Harmon, Representative Ammons, and Clerk Orr, uh, Representative Gazzardi, to uh, discuss this bill and the value it holds for Illinois. Uh, we're hoping, uh, the, the Senator talked about uh, our party, the Democratic Party, uh, supporting this issue. We're hoping we can get the Republican Party to see the value of this as well. And so the Senate Bill 2134 that Senator uh, Harmon would, uh, I'm sorry, that Senator um, Menar will talk about is a bipartisan uh, legislation that we encourage the rest of the Illinois Senate to support as it can benefit all the people we represent. Implementing automatic voter registration into the current voter registration system could ensure the following. Remove barriers to registering, create better accessibility, streamline the process by improving accuracy and efficiency, and it saves money. Uh, I believe that we're all in support of saving money uh, in government. If we can get people registering when they get their driver's license, it will dramatically reduce the voter registration cost that are substantial at county and city offices across the state. We have an opportunity to reduce government duplication and streamlined services, and we should definitely uh, take it. Here in Illinois, we've been a national leader in voter access and modernization, and we need to maintain that leadership. Uh, and by the way, just a few weeks ago in Springfield, we got a shout out from one of my former colleagues, uh, former Senator Barack Obama, who came back as the President of the United States and highlighted this effort. Uh, so I want to thank everyone here for their efforts to push automatic voter registration forward for the state of Illinois, and now I'd like to sponsor the bill, Senator Andy Menard, to talk about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, President Cullerton. Senator Durbin, thanks for bringing us together uh, today. Um, let me also introduce Representative Flowers, who just joined us. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, and to the county clerk, uh, David, thank you for uh, hosting us today in your office. Um, let me begin here. 
Um, it's been said by previous speakers, and it should be repeated, that anyone who is eligible to vote in the state of Illinois should have access to the ballot box uh, without any barriers. Any eligible voter should have access to the ballot box in Illinois without barriers. As Senator Durbin said, other states are taking a different approach uh, to voter registration and to ballot access. And Illinois should lead the way uh, to open up ballot access to everyone so that we not only increase participation, but ultimately increase uh, output from our government here in the state. When the electorate looks like the state of Illinois, uh, we win as a state, and our state government wins. There's four key points to this legislation that I think are important to note today. And many of these things have been brought forward by uh, county clerks across Illinois from uh, the most rural county you can imagine um, here to Cook County. And many of these things have been discussed, but we're at the point now to where uh, we're ready to move on the legislation so that we can take the next step and follow other states um, on the West Coast and around the country that have done this through legislative efforts. But there's four main points, and uh, these are important to this effort. Number one, um, as I mentioned, uh, this bill clearly improves access to the ballot box. That's a win for uh, the people of the state. That's a win for our democracy here in Illinois. That's number one. Uh, number two, it modernizes the voting process. Our society has changed uh, with implementation of technology, uh, with how people live their lives, and we need to make sure that our process and our voting process in Illinois reflects those changes uh, so that we can accommodate people in their busy schedules and in how they live and how that intersects with uh, voting day. So this bill modernizes the process that we have today in our state. Number three, it increases accuracy and reduces errors. Uh, because at the basis of the bill, uh, we use the process of application of a driver's license uh, to begin the registration process. That would immediately register voters who are eligible today that for whatever reason don't become eligible. And we would begin there. That immediately increases accuracy, reduces errors in our system, and produces a better result on Election Day. And finally, uh, during these difficult budget times uh, in Springfield, we need to find ways to make uh, not just state government, but county and local governments across Illinois more efficient. And this bill accomplishes that in a very large and profound way. Uh, we use technology that we have today, that we pay for today as a state and in county and local governments. We use it in a greater t degree to make the process more efficient. Um, you know, David Orr's office, for example, um, has articulated time and again what this would mean in terms of savings and accuracy here in Cook County, and those, uh, those points can be replicated across Illinois. And this isn't just an issue that would save money in, urban, in an urban county or in a suburban county, uh, but the smallest counties in downstate Illinois would see savings uh, from this bill after it is implemented. Many groups have come together to support this bill. It's a diverse coalition, uh, the Just Democracy Coalition, and we're going to hear from a few advocates uh, here this morning about their efforts to get the legislation passed, uh, but they've come together to push uh, this bill through the legislature and ultimately be signed by uh, Governor Rauner. Uh, we've seen broad support grow for this, uh, not just here in Illinois, but across the country. As the Senate President said, this shouldn't be a partisan discussion. Um, opening up the ballot box to voters uh, should not take a partisan tone in Springfield because ultimately the more people we have participating in democracy, uh, the better off we're going to be in the state of Illinois, uh, which is why I'm proud to sponsor the bill. Um, again, I thank everybody for being here, um, and I appreciate the work that's been done on everyone's uh, behalf uh, to get this passed. Uh, next speaker is going to be the House sponsor. Oh, let me, thank you. Can't see the board back here, uh, but um, as I mentioned, there's, there's uh, any number of uh, sitting uh, legislators who have signed on as supporters of the bill, either through co-sponsorship or through iVote, and those are represented on the board here. Uh, beyond just legislators, there's any number of groups across the state, not just here in the city of Chicago, uh, but in counties across the state who have come together to say, let's make the process more efficient, more open, which ultimately leads to better results in our elections. Uh, Representative Ammons is our next speaker. House sponsor of the bill. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning. Thank you to our 
County Clerk. Thank you to all of the elected officials, the dignitaries, and the advocates who are working on this important piece of legislation. My name is Representative Carol Ammons. I'm from Champaign-Urbana. I represent the 103rd District. I was very excited um, to not only see Senator Menard's bill, but I had written a similar bill from a young person that greeted me one day. I was at his door. And he was just turning 17, and he said to me, Representative, I, I'm, I'm not old enough to vote yet. I said, well, you'll be old enough to vote. Did you know Illinois already passed legislation that would allow you to vote if you are 18 by the election? He said, no. I said, wow, do you take a civics class? And he said, yes. I said, okay, well, we need to deal with this. This is an issue that really should not be a partisan issue. This is historic. This is a historic moment. We are excited because so many of our people in our community have fought for this right, and we are simply picking up a mantle that was started for us over 50 years ago during Bloody Sunday. And this is historic because today is close to the end of Black History Month. And I would be remiss if I didn't remember the foot soldiers who fought for this very right. The dignitaries, I call them in Alabama. Those whose names we will never know that lost their lives, that were beaten during Bloody Sunday, crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge, which we, his, we celebrated that historic march and reenacted that, and I was blessed to be able to join them by crossing at the Jubilee. This moment that we stand to expand this right in Illinois should be a very easy thing for us to do collectively. We already know that the more engaged the citizenry are, the better the democracy is. This highlights that by putting all of us together to work and continue to work for the rights of all people in our state. The great unity that I believe will come out of this, Senator, will be that we will cross the aisle in Springfield and say, yes, technology has changed, access is important, and the continuation of getting more and more of our young people involved in civic engagement and politics is good for our state and is good for our country. And so as we begin to commemorate Bloody Sunday, we'll, it'll be in a couple weeks, March 7th, we'll be celebrating again the Voting Rights Act. And in Illinois, we'll be excited because we will pass an expansion and access bill like this bill that will increase the opportunity for many generations to come and we'll continue to improve on our system as technology allows us to do that. But we'll never forget the struggles that it took to add women the right to vote, to add African Americans to the right to vote. We'll never forget that sacrifice and we'll ensure greater participation as we go forward. I hope that our colleagues that are not here today will look at this bill as a great step in the right direction. I remember two sessions ago, two elections ago, a, a senior who was in our county clerk's office at the time. She had been voting for probably longer than I had been alive. And she, on this particular day, was turned away to her polling place because there was a mix-up. And I went to the clerk's office with this older woman to help her cast her ballot that day. And I'll never forget the disappointment that was on her face. A small technical error that would have denied her the right to vote, this is 2008, for the first African American president of the United States. And she was quite disappointed and knew that it was important for her to continue to correct those errors. And so this bill will help make that a reality so that we don't have those kind of incidents in the future. We are thankful for the advocates and we're thankful for all those who've already struggled for this and will continue to work on it. Thank you. We'll keep moving along here. We've got a lot of folks. Uh, we're here obviously to support this very important piece of legislation. And it's historic in this sense. Illinois, as you heard from others, is moving in the right direction. They're moving to expand the franchise in a lot of different ways. Other states, unfortunately, are moving to restrict the ability of people to vote. So why is this so important, this piece of legislation that Andy and Carol have talked about? It is 
because number one, you have to understand mobility. People in this state, and particularly this county, move all the time. Those are the people often that get left out. 550,000 people move within Cook County annually. Another 200,000 move in and out on a regular basis. Nationally, one in five low income Americans move. About 15% annually African Americans, another 14% Hispanic. Many of these people do not know what they have to do because the laws are various from state to state. They think they're registered. Well, I already did it. Why do I? I moved four blocks. I moved to a town. So, one, it's a very important we deal with this problem of mobility. Number two, we have the technology to do it. We now have the data. We've moved forward, as other speakers have said. We have the ability now, because of the data collection, that William McNary just showed up. A, a, a bill moves from Maywood to where? Urbana? Where are you from? I'm from Urbana. Urbana. <laughs> Urbana. Why should he have to go and register? If he's been registered, vote for 20 years. Yeah. We have the capacity now to do that and to do it electronically easy. Okay? That's what this is all about, making it easy because we have the technology. Now, we've already made a lot of strides, partly because of the elected officials in this room and the activists. We had some wonderful activists in this state. Uh, a few years ago, we designed something called All In, and it was this kind of dream that there would all these various things would pass to really make Illinois a shining light about voting registration uh, and, and um, voting and registration. And just a couple things, because we're well on this path that Andy and Carol are going to take us to the goal line on. For example, we now have what's called NCOA, National Change of Address Cards. 350,000 Illinoisans now move from one place to another. If they fill out this card, they're automatically re-registered in their new place. Okay? Illinois has joined ERIC. That is a conglomeration of states that share data. Mm -hmm. What that means now is, you know, the Cook County clerk knows who dies in Cook County. But I do not know about all the people that have the nerve to die outside of Cook County. <laughs> okay? And, but now we can gather this data when people move, when they register elsewhere. Uh, and finally, if all these other things don't work, again, thanks to the uh, leadership of these legislators, we have election day registration. So we've come a long way. So this is important, one, because of access to the ballot, extremely important if you believe in a democracy, but also the efficiencies here that others have talked about, Andy talked about it, Carol talked about it, efficiencies when you can do this electronically. There's a lot more mistakes made on paper, my friends, than are made electronically. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can save money, um, the list can be much cleaner because we can clean those lists. This is a win-win situation, and I'm, I'm really proud of you all the work you're doing, and I do hope that we'll pass this piece of legislation to continue a dream for a better democracy here in Illinois. Thank you. My name is Selena Villanueva, and I'm the Civic and Youth Engagement Manager at the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Over the past 10 years at ICER, we've worked to increase voter registration and engagement of immigrant communities throughout Illinois. This work stems from the fact that, as with almost all minority groups in the state, voter participation for our communities has been consistently low particularly for immigrant communities. However, we're at a point in time where immigrant communities have been attacked over and over again. And I thank you, Senator Durbin, for being our champion consistently. Um, we love you for that. Your name is always thrown around the office. That's how much we love you. Um, and also the state electeds who have also, again, stood with us to help represent communities, uh, immigrant communities, for the work, the hard work, and the effort that they put in the state of Illinois. The push for automatic voter registration has served as a huge motivation to improve our democracy because our state is better served when we have many voices, including immigrant voices, participating in our democratic process. We know this. So we at ICER deeply understand the value of registering new Americans or recently naturalized citizens, as well as engaging young people from immigrant communities that are, tr that are turning 18 and are eligible to vote, because there is a growing number of young Latinos in the United States, about 50,000 per year in the United States that are turning 18 and are US citizens that are eligible to vote. That's a huge number and we're trying to get them. And because we know that democracy requ requires active participation, automatic registration would remove a barrier in the process, process of civic engagement. AVR, as we like to call it, would give organizations like ours, like Rainbow Push, like Six Chicago Votes, and so many others who do the voter registration in high schools and on the streets and in churches and at oath ceremonies, it would give us more time to, and, and focus to be able to invest in voter education and voter engagement so that we can have a more informed electorate. 
So I stand here today as a representative of not only my organization, but of the Just Democracy Coalition, a coalition of organizations that have come together to push for automatic voter registration and voter modernization. And that's championed by Senator Monar here, as well as Representative Ammons and so many others that are standing with us here today. We thank you for your work. We thank you for your leadership. And we're ready to fight the good fight in Springfield with all of you. So thank you. Hello, my name is Dana Marino and I'm here with Chicago Votes. I am a millennial and I am here because I believe that voting is a fundamental right that's no different from the freedom of speech. I first became involved in organizing after my own interest in getting out the vote during our last local election here in Chicago. Um, I knew that many of my peers are frustrated with the system and yet I realized that young people are aware of the things that are hindering them in their quality of life, but they needed to be able to turn that frustration into action by using their vote. The fight to engage youth in politics and civic involvement is rooted in barriers of inclusion and with automatic voter registration or AVR we can remove some of the hurdles to participation. In Chicago's last election, only 40% of registered voters cast ballots and less than 10% of millennials voted in the last governor's race. It is no secret that a democratic society works best when all citizens participate, but many young people are working multiple jobs and long hours. They have student loan debt. They're dealing with rising costs of food and housing without seeking an increase, of rages, of increase in their wages or better job prospects. Um, they're worried about surviving and initiatives such as early voting and same day registration help to involve more young people but automatic voter registration would be a game changer for young people who may currently feel disconnected from the political process and have fewer barriers to per for them to participate. Um, only two other states have passed automatic voting initiatives. In Oregon, it was estimated that 800,000 eligible voters were not registered before AVR in that state. In California, the number is over 6 million eligible unregistered voters. Um, Illinois needs this legislation, and Illinois needs this legislation making voter registration more accurate. We need this legislation to make the voting process more efficient for young voters. Um, Illinois needs this so that young people can have access to the political process and have a voice that's included in deciding their collective futures. Chicago Votes is proud to stand with Senator Durbin and Cook County Clerk David Orr and the state and House Senate leaders to support automatic voter registration. So thank you very much. Thank you.